Hello there. Welcome to Tuck and Cash. I hope you are doing well. For today's video, we are going to rate all the bonus cards in Digital Wingspan. And for my special guest today, we have our Wingspan expert, Flan, to do this with me. How are you doing, Flan? Hello. Yep, I'm doing good today. Um, looking forward to this. Hopefully not going to take quite as long as going through the bird cards, um, but should still be useful for yeah, all the viewers out there. Yeah, we recently did a tier list for all 180 birds in digital wingspan. So if you haven't checked it out, the video is on my channel. So we thought it would be a nice follow up to talk about um, all the bonus card in the game as well. Um, so without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. All right, for our first bonus card here, we have the anatomist where you score points by playing birds with body parts in their name. So you get three points if you have two to three birds or seven points for four or more. This is one of the bonus card, um, one of the few that's not in online games. So I don't play this a lot. Um, so Flan, do you, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. It's one that I don't come across a lot because, you know, most of my games are online. Um, so you don't get this one come up too much. Obviously, if you do play the Automa or if you play local games, um, you will get this this more often. But yeah, I think this is an okay bonus card. Um, I've got it in B tier. Okay. Um, I think it is fairly straightforward to to get the lower on. So to get those three points, um, you know, there's quite a lot of birds that that have the body parts. So 22%. Um, so yeah, getting that lower bound, I think, is fairly straightforward. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that's going to be a huge part of this tier list is what's the minimum number of birds you have to play to score the bonus card. I think um, playing two birds to score three points um, is not bad compared to yeah. some other bonus card that we're going to see in a moment. So yeah, I think we can put it in B tier right now and see how it fares with other bonus card. All right, next we have the backyard birder. So you score by playing birds that are worth less than four points and you have to play at least five birds to score three points this got to be one of the lowest tier for me yeah yeah i think if there was an f tier I'd be <laughs> um, but because we're because we're only got d um that's as low as it can go but yeah it's just it's one of those bonus cards where you you're already penalizing yourself by successfully doing it because to score points you actively have to play low point birds. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of low point birds in the game that do have really strong powers. Um, so we talked about those in our, in our tier list video before. Um, but yeah, you know, by playing more than six birds, you only get six points. So it's less than a point per bird. Uh, and when you think about it that way, it's just not worth the investment trying to play exactly it's not worth investing in playing low point birds when you're only getting such a small return from each of them it's one of those bonus cards where i'd say if you do pick it up early um it's it's not worth basing your strategy around this you know i'd almost just ignore it and and focus on playing other birds that work well with what i've already got um or that are going to score more points on their own without the need for the bonus card yeah, I agree. I've seen many games where, you know, bonus card like this can be a really trap, really a trap for a beginner where they got this bonus card and they keep playing low points bird to score yeah. the additional three point, as you say, is totally not worth it. Um, and it can be deceiving for a beginner as well. If you look at the percent of card that satisfy this bonus card, like 42 is really high that means more likely you're going to draw a lot of cards that can satisfy this bonus card but as we discuss discuss it it might just be not worth it all right next we have the bird counter so for this bonus card you score two points per birds that you play that has a flocking power this is yeah. pretty good and flexible. I like it. Absolutely. Yeah, I really like this bonus card. Um, I'd put it in A tier. I okay. Think. There's quite a few of these bonus cards uh, that give you two points per bird. So, you know, the two that we've already seen, there's a cap, there's an upper limit on how many points you can score. Um, but from these bonus cards where it's just per bird that you've got, 
uh, you know, there's there's no real cap on on how many points. So I've seen games where this card on its own has scored, you know, ten or twelve points. Um, but yeah, even that aside, just looking back to to the birds that meet this bonus card, I think generally, as we said before in the tier list video, looking at the birds, you know, these tucking birds are some of the stronger birds in the game. So you're already playing strong brown power birds, and if you have this bonus card, they're all worth two extra points. So yeah, it's it's encouraging you to play strong birds, and it, it can get a lot of points as well. Yeah, I agree. The synergy is just great. You're scoring more points by playing already good birds. So, yep, I like I like it. It's definitely in the A tier. All right, next we have the bird feeder. So you score points by playing birds that eat grain. Again, this is similar to black backyard birder, where you have to play at least five birds to score three points. So to me, this definitely go into the same D tier as the backyard birder. Yeah, I'd agree. I think I think it maybe goes slightly above backyard birder, but definitely in that D tier. Yeah, as you said, you know, you have to play five birds just to get three points. Um, it it does have a nice upper tier. You know, if if you can meet that seven point threshold, getting those eight birds, um, you know, it's not a bad return from a bonus card. But eight birds, you know. It's a lot. Games before where <laughs> I've not played eight birds in total, let yeah. alone eight birds that specifically eat seeds. Um, and again, you know, it's one of those where you look at the bottom of the card, you think, okay, there's 44% of cards that meet this. Um, but in a lot of cases, those are low point birds already. Yeah. Um, and as I said, just getting enough cards down to meet this bonus card. Um, and it, unless you get this right at the start and you can think about it as you're going through the game, you know, this is one of those cards where if you draw it late in the game, there's almost no chance that you've already conveniently played enough birds to meet this. So it's it's really difficult to score high with this one. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I think Bird Feeder is another one of those bonus cards that if you started with it or you if you draw it, you are better off just kind of ignore it and play your yeah. best game and not try to yeah. score that three points. All right, next we have the breeding manager. So you score one point for every bird that has at least four eggs laid on them. So in some ways, it's kind of flexible because um, you can score one point per bird, but definitely not as good as, for example, the bird counter. Um, so I'm thinking either C or D. What do you think, Flan? Yeah, I put this in. I put this in C tier. I think I've almost had a bit of an epiphany with this card um, recently. You know, mm -hmm. I think when I first started playing this game, didn't really like it. Um, it's it's quite difficult to score high. It almost has the opposite problem of of the bird counter that we talked about before, where even though there's no theoretical cap on this, uh, in most situations you're really only going to get um, you know two, three, four points from it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it is better than those D tier birds just because. I think particularly in the base game, um, you're you're encouraged really to play to lay lots of eggs, um, and there are plenty of birds that can that can fit that. So yeah, it's it's not going to be a high scorer, um, but I think you can reliably get you know about three points from this bonus card, which is more than a lot of these other ones where you can't even meet that lower bound and then you get zero. So yeah, in some cases you kind of you take that lower risk but lower reward from this bonus card. Yeah, I agree. Like it is, it's the idea that you can at least score something. Um, right. If you just have one or two birds, compared to some of the other bonus card, where if you don't meet the lower threshold, um, is a, it's just zero. So, um, yeah, I agree that it's probably in the C tiers for me as well. All right. So for our next bonus card, we have the cartographer. So you score points by playing birds with geography terms in their name. Um, again, this is one of those bonus cards that's not in the online game, but by looking at the bonus structure, it's pretty similar to Anatomist. So I assume it's going to be in B tier. Yeah, I think it goes next to Anatomist and B tier. You're right. It's um, you know it's it's the same breakdown in terms of how many points you get based on how many birds you played, um, and there's almost the same number of cards that meet this one as the anatomist so i think there are slightly more that meet the anatomist so yeah maybe this one is is slightly below that but um yeah essentially they're they're similar in terms of the sort of return you can expect from them yep all right next we have the ecologist um so you you count the birds in each of your habitat and then you score two points per bird for the habitats where you have the fewest birds 
So I usually、uh, am pretty happy if I get ecologists because typically you you play at least、um, two to three columns of birds in in one game. So this is almost like a guarantee to to six points per game. What do you think? Yeah, I think you're right. This is this is a really strong, reliable bonus card. Like you said, I think in almost every game you're going to have at least two birds in each habitat. So、um, it, it's basically a guaranteed four points in most situations.、Um, and yeah, it's it's really easy to score six or even eight points、um, if you're getting a lot of birds down. So yeah, absolutely, this is a, a really strong bonus card. Yeah, definitely top of the eight here for now. All right. Next, we have enclosure builder. So you score points by playing birds with ground nets. So you need you need to play at least four birds with ground nets or star nets to score four points. So we have quite a few of the bonus card that are similar that you know deal with different nest type.、Um, I'm not quite sure. I, I I was thinking about C tier. What do you think? Yeah, I've got it in C tier. I think it's. It's not. It's not amazing, but in most situations, I think, especially if you keep this at the start of the game, I think getting that four points is quite reliable.、Um, so yeah, if you can get four points from a bonus card, I don't think I don't think you can complain too much.、Uh, but obviously, if you've had to play four birds for that,、um, you know, the return per bird is less, particularly when compared to something like the anatomist or the cartographer. So you know, those birds you play, you play. Those bonus cards, you play four birds and get seven points, whereas in this case you get four. So, yeah, it's it's not the strongest, but I think you can make it work. Yeah, just from the return standpoint, the return is just not as big. And you know, looking at this in C tier,、um, it's also pretty similar to breeding manager. If if you just score the lower end,、um, you are making、yeah. maybe like one points per bird. But here's an interesting question: If you have a choice between enclosure builder and breeding manager, what would you go for? That's a difficult question. I think at the start of the game,、um, if I have at least one bird that meets the enclosure builder already in my hand, or maybe there's one in the tray I'm going to pick up, I'd probably lean towards that because, you know, I've got the rest of the game to only get three more down.、Mm-hmm. That's four points. So I think early game. You know these these nest bonus cards. I think they can work quite nicely because you're giving yourself a lot of time to work towards meeting it.、Um, late game, it's entirely situational. You know, it depends if I've if I've got already three of these birds down, I might chance it to get one more.、Um, but I might look at taking the safer return on the breeding manager if I can already get two or three points from that、um, and lock those points in. Yeah, good point. I guess it will come down to what what do you have in your starting hand and what's in the tray.、Um, but yeah, good point. All right, next we have the falconer, where you score two points per bird with a hunting power. So I think this probably go to A tier、um, with the bird counter. Yep, and I think for a similar reason to the bird counter, you know, it's there's no cap on this, so. Um, again, I've seen games where a falcon are in its own and scored ten, twelve, fourteen points,、uh, which is huge from a single bonus card.、Uh, I think you do have to be a bit careful with this. It, you know, not all of the hunting powers are equal, so it can sort of you know lure you into into playing birds that don't have great brown powers. But having said that, there's a lot of good forest birds in particular, and even good wetland birds that might be three or four points. With a hunting power for one food,、um, so if you've got the falconer, suddenly that's five or six points for one food,、uh, and that's that's huge. You know, you don't get many birds that that meet that. So yeah, absolutely, this is this is a, one of the strongest bonus cards to me. Yeah, absolutely, I agree with that. All right, next we have the fishery manager. So you score points by playing birds that eat fish. So you get three points for two birds. For the minimum, I mean, just by looking at this, this is again kind of similar to bonus card that we have in the B tier. But would you say it's better than anatomist and cartographer? It's a difficult one. I think I think I'd put it slightly lower.、Obviously、okay. The upside for this bonus card is higher because you get eight points、mm-hmm. rather than seven. Yeah.、Um, but 
you know, just based on experience and thinking back, okay, how many times have I actually managed to max this one out? You know, there's only 18% of cards um, that, that meet this. So if you think, okay, well, if I'm going to play 12 birds in an average game, and that's probably even slightly higher than what you might expect to play, you know, on average, only three of them are going to have fish. So you're not maximizing this. I and mean, obviously you can, you can plan around it if you have got this bonus card at the start. Um, but yeah, just just thinking back to the number of games I've played and how many times have I actually maximized this um, is not many times. But even that lower range, you know, if you can just get two fish cards mm -hmm. down and get the three points, I think that's a good that's a good enough return. You've not had to put too much work in. So yeah, yeah. I still think this is a strong bonus card. So absolutely in B tier. Yeah, I agree. Um, this also remind me of my own experience playing games with fishery manager. Um, I noticed that a lot of the birds that eat fish lives in wetland, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I found that, you know, in some games, if I already have one or two birds um, that I play in the wetland that doesn't eat fish, suddenly it, it can become kind of difficult to score for this bonus card. Um, yeah, I think I think that's a really good point. Um, like you say, if you, I think if you start with this one, you can maybe plan a bit more around it and and keep some of those wetland spaces open. But you're right. I think there there might only be, you know, a couple of cards that eat fish and don't go in the wetlands. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as soon as you filled up, you know, two of those spaces, you can't max out this bonus card. You know, you're you're limited to just three points, which isn't great. But again, as we said, you know, if you can get those two birds down and for three points, uh, I think it, that is still quite strong. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, next, we have the food web expert. So you score two points for each birds that eat grub. So this sounds like an A tier bird again, but I, I I'm thinking it's probably at the lower end of A tier. Yeah, I'd almost be inclined to put this at the top of B tier. Okay. Um, I think you know there are a lot of strong birds um, that eat only grubs. You know ranging right through from early game into late game so i think it is you know easy to get at least one or two uh, i think what stops this being as good as the falcon and the bird counter is just the number of birds that actually meet this you know it's only nine percent yeah um so trying to get three or four or more than that that meet this bonus card it, it can be quite difficult um and certainly it's one of those where if i draw this in the last round chances are i've probably haven't played any of these birds you know maybe one if i'm lucky it's quite rare i draw this at the end of the game and, and already have you know four or five birds down that meet it so yeah again it is one way if you draw it early you maybe can work towards it and like i said there's there's a lot of good birds early game um, that do meet this that you can think about playing but yeah i think that nine percent uh it just it really limits the utility you can get from this card yeah i i, I think that makes a lot of sense um again also, when you say like birds that um, that can satisfy the food web expert, what comes to mind are birds like the the Wilson snipe, um, which only costs one grub, and with the food web expert, you can score seven points. That's you know pretty huge um, value there. But again, that's quite specific scenario. Yeah. All right. Next, we have the forester. So you play, you score points by playing birds that can only live in forests. So you score at least four points for three birds. Um, I I kind of like the forester. I don't think it's quite tier A, but tier B maybe. Yeah, I I kind of struggled with this one as well. Um, for me, it was sort of between between B and C tier. I think what holds this back is the fact that you need five birds mm -hmm. um, to meet the upper threshold. Um, and I think just one thing worth pointing out is um, that, the, that the points on the wing search site, um, they're not quite right. So you do get four points for that lower bound, um, but you in fact get eight for the for the for getting five or more. So yeah. it's one of those, if you can meet it and you can get five birds down, that eight points can be huge, uh, similar with the, with the fishery manager. But I think what makes this, for me, worse than the fishery manager is that you need five. So if you pick this up in the middle of the game and you've already played one bird in your forest that doesn't meet this, well, suddenly you've got absolutely no chance of meeting that upper threshold. Um, but I think getting that four points is quite straightforward. Um, I think particularly if I'm thinking early game, you know, there's a lot of 
forest only birds that I would already look to play that meet this. So, you know, you look at the chickadees and the nut hatches, they would go in there. Um, and, and certainly even late game, there's, there's a few nice bonus card birds um, that go only in the forest that would meet this as well. So I think getting three is fairly straightforward. Um, but just that that upper limit of getting eight is is so difficult. So for me, I have got this sort of upper end of C tier, but mm -hmm. I think you could you could potentially make a case that it's sort of lower B tier. I th it's it's somewhere in between the two. Yeah, I I think I I, I can I can agree that is in maybe the lower B tier. Um, just reflecting on my experience, I I think there are quite um, a few games where I play. Um, I I I noticed that Forrester is not that difficult to score like you say there are a lot of good forest bird that you can play in the early game that only live in forest i think it's one of those bonus cards you don't really want to draw if you're going for a forest engine you know things like the wood duck the chipping sparrow california quail um you know there's lots of these kinds of birds that would help build that forest engine mm -hmm. um that don't only live in the forest and so you're taking up spots that you could have used for meeting this bonus card all right, next we have Historian. So you score two points for every bird that was named after a person. So again, this kind of looked like an A tier bird. And I should point out that Historian is another bonus card that is not in online games. So I don't actually play this a lot, so I'm not quite sure. No, I think, again, it's one of those where for me it only comes up if I am playing Otoma. Um, or if I'm playing local games. Um, I think, for me, it's alongside Food Web Expert, mm -hmm. probably slightly above in, in B tier. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of birds, you know, even like the Wilson Snipe that you mentioned before. Mm. Suddenly that's seven, seven points for, for one food. Um, but yeah, I think there are, there are some strong birds that I would look to play anyway, um, even if I don't have this bonus card. I think generally it tends to be more you know birds i play at the end of the game for scoring points rather than building an engine so kind of the ones that that come to mind for me are sort of cassin's finch um says phoebe yeah those kinds of birds that you play later in the game um but yeah it's again it's nice because it's it's no cap but mm -hmm. i think unlike falconer and bird counter and some of these other ones that i'll come on to later uh, you know i rarely see this scoring double digits you i see six points and and that's it yeah, I, I, I think, you know, upper B or lower A, that's basically where I would put it. Yeah. All right, next we have the large bird specialist. So you score points by playing birds with wingspan over 65 centimeter. So that's for the lower bound is four birds for three points. That's not great. I'm thinking this yeah. is more in line with C tier. Yeah, I mean, I've actually got this in D tier. Um, Ooh, okay. I, I had a feeling you might put it in C tier, so uh, <laughs> we, we, we can talk about that. But yeah. yeah, I think, you know, there are a lot of really strong birds that meet this. Um, yeah. Particularly birds that you might play later game. I'm thinking lots of those wetland birds that give you bonus points or, you know, are worth eight or nine points in their own right. So if you can get a few of those down, absolutely, this, this is, you know, a, a good bonus card. I just think you really don't get many points per bird you know yeah it's, you, you you might play five birds and then you get three points from it yeah and and that's that's really tough to take for this so yeah it's okay but that upper limit being only six points i think that just really limits the potential for this bonus card yeah i, I think i'm gonna put it in lower c tier just based on my personal experience i i just i just feel like i've scored the large bird especially a lot more often than I score the backyard bird or a bird feeder. Um, but like you say, four four birds for three points is again one of those bonus cards that if you have it, you 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 probably don't want to focus too much on scoring that three points. Um, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right. Next, we have the next box builder. So you score points by playing birds with cavity nests. So that's basically the same bonus card as the enclosure builder, just for a different nest type. So we're yep, going to put um, that in C. Next, we have the omnivore specialist. So you score two points per bird that eat wild food. 
I I think this gotta be A tier, but where is it in the A tier? So I'd probably put it top at the moment. Um, right. I think it's I think it's stronger than the the other cards we've got in A tier at the moment. But yeah, you know this is absolutely one of the strongest bonus cards in mm -hmm. the game. Uh, I think in in ninety percent of situations, if I get this in my hand at the start, I'm going to keep it. Uh, again, for the same reason as some of those other ones we've talked about, where it's two points per bird. You know, I've seen so many games where Omnivore Specialist has scored ten or more points on its own. Um, and you know, if you think about some of the strongest birds in the game, you know, the, the two Ravens, the Franklin's Gull. Uh, you know, even some of those really big point birds right. that go in the wetlands at the end, like the Swan and the Woodstalk. You know, these are huge point birds or really important engine building birds in their own right. Um, that you want to be playing anyway and so to get two points extra for all of these strong birds yeah I, this is this is just a, a really really good bonus card yeah i totally agree um again just thinking about my personal experience i've seen many games where you you can really upset a game if you have omnivore mm. as a bonus card because you can if you play the right bird you can score 10 12 points from it and that can make a huge Absolutely. difference yeah sure. yeah very strong definitely top of a tier all right next we have Ulogis. so for this card um you score three points if you have seven to eight birds that has at least one eight lay on them and you can score six you have nine or more birds um again this is one of the card that i'm happy to start with it's almost like a guaranteed three points and most often than not six points so um, this is A tier for me. Yeah, I mean, I'd almost go, go as far as saying if I have this in my starting hand, I basically see it as a free six point. In in almost every situation, um, you're gonna you're gonna max out on this. I mean, like I like we touched on before, I think the base game really encourages you to build up um, a strong engine in your grasslands, and by doing that, you're already gonna get a lot of eggs. Mm -hmm. um, nine birds isn't a lot. I think there's only I can only think of a handful of occasions where I've not had enough birds to meet this bonus card. Right. You know, in in almost every situation, you're going to have at least nine birds by the end of the game. Yeah. Um, and in most situations, your best option at the end of the game in terms of maximizing your points is going to be laying eggs. So really, there's there's only a few small specific situations where you're not going to fulfill this um and yeah in in 90 for 95 percent of situations you're going to score six points on this so yeah it's 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 a no-brainer for me keeping this at the start yeah i totally agree definitely one of the strongest bonus card that you can have and i i think talking about specific situation um i i, I think a few i can think of is when you play birds like the cow bird that doesn't have any nests yeah. um Eight yeah. spots on them um, that can make it a little bit more difficult so you kind of have to plan around that but otherwise um, it's pretty easy to score that six points in most games for sure well here here is another interesting question what about Ulogis and Ecologists between those two do you have a preference or do you think one is stronger than the other I would probably just give it to Ulogist mm -hmm. um, I think you know, when we when we looked at the ecologist, for me that is a guaranteed four points. Yeah, that's kind of the lower bound. Mm -hmm. uh, in in a lot of situations, you can get six. In some situations, you can get four. So it does have that higher ceiling. Um, I just think that in most cases, I would rather take the surefire six points from the eulogist um, than risk trying to get. 12 birds down to get eight points from the ecologist you know i think in 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 most cases they're either going to be equal or you'll get more from the eulogist so I, i'd put it slightly ahead yeah i agree that's my feeling too i i'll probably take the eulogist if i have a choice yeah. all right next we have the passerine specialist so you score points by playing birds with wingspan less than 30 centimeter so that's similar to large bird specialists so i'm gonna put in c tier yeah i think i think you know we can make similar points um as we did with the large bird specialist um again kind of a low ceiling um only six points and in a lot of situations you might find that you only meet that um that three point threshold anyway um i think for me it might be slightly stronger um, and the only reason I would say that is because 
there's a lot of those double birds. So if you think um, the house wren, the tit mouse, right. you know these birds that allow you to get down extra birds um, without using extra turns. Only, you know, I, I can think of times where I've had a few of those, and suddenly you might be able to get two or three birds that meet this down in one turn um, that meet this. But again, in most situations, that is only going to get you those three points. So yeah. it's certainly not one of those birds, um, not one of those bonus cards I would keep at the start of the game and then focus on. You know, I'll, I'll do other things. I'll build a nice engine and I'll try and score points. And if I meet this, that's nice. But yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna plan my whole game around it. Yeah, good point. All right, next we have the photographer. So you score points by playing birds with colors in their names. I think this is the last bonus card that's not in online game. But again, looking at this, three points for f three three points for four birds. This is more like a C tier. Yeah, I think it probably goes alongside um, the passerine specialist and large bird, maybe slightly above, just because you do get seven points if you max this out. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, this is one of those where it pairs quite nicely with some of the other bonus cards. Um, you know, the one that comes to mind in particular is the anatomist. You know, there's so many birds that you'll see in the game that are red-headed something or black-winged something, um, and they're going to meet both the color and the body part. So I think it's one of those where if I already have the anatomist, I might lean towards this just because I can minimize the number of birds I'm playing in order to meet both of these. Uh, I can kind of get two for one. But yeah, it's it's certainly weaker than, than the anatomist um, and probably the cartographer as well. So yeah, I think I think C2 is probably right for this. Yeah, great points. I, I, I think that's another great tips as well when you're looking at bonus card. Um, if you can find or see any synergy between um, different bonus card, um, that can definitely help you score better as well because um, you you might be able to play one bird that satisfies two bonus card, then that's you know great for scoring. Yeah, absolutely. All right, next we have the platform builder. So another um, bonus card for nest type. So this is gonna go in C tier. And then we have the Prairie Manager. So you score points by playing birds that can only live in grassland. So this is similar to the Forester, but you only need to play two birds to score three points. So does that put it higher than the Forester? I think it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it puts it slightly above the Forester. Um, it's kind of difficult to compare. You know, I know they are, they look very similar on the surface. Um, just a different habitat. Um, I think some similar points come into play where, you know, if you're looking at the kind of engine that the base game encourages you to build, which is in the grasslands, mm. there are a lot of strong grassland birds that don't meet this bonus card. Yeah. So you're filling up those spots with other birds that aren't going to meet this. Yeah. Uh, in a lot of situations, it is hard to get those four or more birds mm -hmm. just because once you've played two birds that don't meet it, you know, you, you're suddenly you're suddenly capped at those three points. But as you said, only two birds for three points. I think that's that's relatively straightforward. Um, and particularly if I'm thinking late game, you know, there's quite a few strong grassland only birds mm -hmm. that let you lay lots of eggs on certain nest types, or that give you another bonus card. Um, I'd probably be looking to play one or two of those anyway. Yeah. So if I can get three points for doing that, um, then then yeah, I, I'm I'm not going to complain. Yeah, I, I think you make a very good point. This remind me as well. Um, in in many games, I find it it can be kind of challenging to score the the prairie manager when you are building a grassland engine because a lot of those um, great grassland engine bird they usually live in multiple habitat, um, so that can really limit your options. But otherwise, yeah, B tier, pretty good. All right, next we have rodentologist. So you score two points per bird that eats rodent. So to me, that looks like an A tier bird for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely an A tier um, for the similar reasons as the others. I'd probably put it as you have done, just above the falconer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, almost every bird really that, that meets falconer is, is going to meet rodentologist. Yeah. Um, but there are, there are, you know some real notable birds that meet rodentologist you know the ravens being a classic example right they don't meet the falconer 
Um, but yeah, it's it's just such a strong bonus card. I think there are a lot of very strong birds in the early game that you'd look to play. As I said, you know the ravens being the obvious example, but you know, there's there's quite a few forest birds that eat rodents, and suddenly with this bonus card, you're getting five or six points uh, for a single food, um, as we mentioned with the falconer. But yeah, even late game, there are some real point bombs that are going to get even more points. So you know, bold eagle is suddenly an eleven point bird. Um, Great Horned Owl is suddenly a 10 point bird so yeah. you can really get huge points um, you know, from, from your birds at the end of the game if you have this bonus card and yeah I think it's one of those bonus cards where I would keep it at the start of the game even if I don't have any birds that meet it because you can almost certainly count on getting at least a couple um, throughout the game as, as you're playing yeah absolutely and you know, you you kind of mentioned it talking about synergy. That's definitely a lot of synergy between rodentologist and falconer. Um, if you have yeah. both of this bonus card um, in your hand, suddenly you can add four points to um, say like a predator that eat rodent. Um, that's really strong to have yeah. that combo. 100%. Yeah, and I think this is probably something that we'll we'll touch on a bit more later as well. But yeah, if if I'm looking for a pair of bonus cards that work best above any other it would be rodentologist, rodentologist and falconer um, they're just so strong there's already there's loads of birds loads of really strong birds that meet both of these and like you say yeah you, know, you get four extra points for each of those yeah that's just it's so huge this also remind me of a lot of the predator that only costs one food um mm. so you're getting like you know seven or eight points from one food that's like almost the best value you can get um in the game yeah. it's so hard to get better value than that yeah all right next we have the visionary leader so for this bonus card you count the bird cards that you have in the hand at the end of the game and you score four points if you have five to seven birds and seven points if you have eight or more birds in your hand um, I, I think this is definitely going to D tier. Any objection to that? No, I just <laughs> it's one of those again. It's like, what possible strategy could you, you know, intentionally do to end up with lots of cards at the end of the game? Like, yeah. For me, the most ideal situation at the end of a game is where I don't have any bird cards left. And I don't have any food left because to me that means I've optimized my play. I've drawn the exact cards I needed, got the exact amount of food I needed, and I've managed to maximize everything. To me, if I have bird cards left in my hand at the end of the game, I've probably done something wrong because I've had to spend too many turns gaining cards. Um, you know, there's a few exceptions, like some of the other bonus cards we talked about. I'd say if you are building a really strong wetland engine. Mm you're naturally going to have lots of cards at the end of the game. That's right. just part of building a wetland engine. But for me, that's a very you know specific one kind of strategy that the visionary leader works with. Yeah. And in every other situation, which would be like 90% of my games, I'm going to score zero points from this. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really not the kind of card that you keep at the start of the game. Totally agree. Definitely at the bottom of my pick as well. So yeah, I think it's going to... It, it, it's right that I stay at the bottom of D tier here. All right, next we have Viticulturalist. So you score points by playing birds that eat cherry. So three points for at least two birds. That looks like, you know, kind of similar to Fishery Manager, I want to say. Yeah, I'd probably put it between the Fishery Manager and Cartographer, I think. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of breakdown where two or three birds, you get three points, four or more, you get seven. Mm -hmm. um, obviously similar to Fishery Manager in the food type. Um, but yeah, I think you can, in most situations, count on getting the three points from this. Um, but it's one of those where I, I probably max this out more often than the Fishery Manager. Yeah. Just because you have more flexibility. You know, there's birds that go in all three habitats that are strong birds, either from an engine building perspective um, or from you know scoring lots of points at the end of the game by getting bonus cards or just really big point birds down um, you know there's lots of these kinds of birds that eat cherries so your options I think are a little bit more flexible um, than the fishery manager and yeah certainly you can count on those three points and and always give yourself an opportunity of getting the seven 
All right, next we have the wetland scientists. So you score points by playing birds that can only live in the wetland. So this probably go with the lower B tier amongst other habitat specific bonus card. Um, do you have any preference um, comparing the three of them? Well, I want to make a case for this being in C tier. I, well, I like this a lot less. Okay. Um, I think it. I think it loses points for similar reasons as um, the fishery manager and the forester kind of combined reasoning. In that, you know, as soon as you've played one bird in your wetland that doesn't meet this, mm -hmm. you're limited to three points. Um, and playing three or four birds for three points is not great. That kind of, for me, puts it on par with some of those nest ones where you get four points for four birds. So I see three points for three birds as, as basically being the same. Yeah, I, I think I'm convinced. Um, also just looking at um, the number of points you can make per birds, if you just look mm. at the minimum bound, it's definitely the worst of the three habitat bonus cards. So yeah, so maybe top yeah. of C tier. Yeah, and I think, you know, just another point, I think it, again, it comes down to looking at how many cards actually meet this. And if you think, okay, say I'm going to play 12 cards mm -hmm. and 25, 26% of them meet this, that's only three. So yeah. you're just barely making this lower bound. Yeah, great points. Totally agree. All right. I think this is our last bonus card here. We have the Wildlife Gardener. So you score points by playing birds with bonus. So again, this is going to go with the rest of the nest type bonus card in the yep, C tier. Right. Yep. All right, there you have it. The, the tier list for all the bonus cards in Digital Wingspan. And looking at the tier list, I kind of see the trend here where in A tier, you have bonus card that oftentimes give you two points per bird. They're really flexible. No, not really an upper bounds on how much point you can score, except for maybe oologists and ecologists. And even with ecologists, theoretically, you can score 10 points if you fill up your board. So it um, doesn't happen quite often. Um, and then you have B tier, where you generally get pretty good returns in terms of bonus point per birds to play. So you can you can be looking at getting three or four points per two birds or three birds. So those are the B tier bonus card. And then C tier, you just have slightly lower return um, in terms of bonus point for the number of birds you have to play. Um, and then we are looking at D tier, which are the absolute worst value return for birds you have to play like five birds to get three points or the visionary leader where you know that there's not m that many situation where you can have many cards in your hand at the end of the game to score it so yeah any more thoughts on bonus card yeah i think just to say um you know you can use this list in a similar way to the bird tier list that we worked on previously um, obviously this is going to be a lot stronger in the early game so when you're making that decision from your initial choice of two bonus cards um, you know if you see one of those a tier bonus cards you know, in almost all situations you're going to look to keep that and then obviously you can you can go down the tiers and, and you can see those some of those c and d tier bonus cards that maybe you'd look to avoid um, but yeah it's it's difficult to necessarily rate bonus cards for their late game usage because it is all situational mm -hmm. you know you might already have uh, maxed out the bird feeder bonus card when you draw it so suddenly that's not going to be d tier to you that's going to be a tier because it's getting you seven points um but yeah it, it, it is all situational and and it's all going to depend on on the kinds of birds that you've already played during that game yeah absolutely um and i i guess one one point that i want to make as well especially you know, when you're playing bonus card in late game, um, I, I think one important thing to keep in mind is, you know, just kind of have some sort of idea how many potential points you can make from playing a bird that gives you bonus card compared to points that you can score by just running your engine, say like your grassland. Um, so that's going to be the crucial calculation um, to make when you're considering playing a bonus card at the end game. Yeah, and I think it's useful to have in mind this list of bonus cards. Um, you know, this is probably just one of those things that comes down to 
playing the game enough and sort of having experience, being familiar with, with what bonus cards come up. Um, certainly if I'm playing a bonus card in that last round, I like to have in mind, okay, you know, what am I looking for here? So, you know, have I already got three or four omnivore birds down or rodentologist birds? Um, you know, have I already got four bowl nest birds? You know, I'm, I'm trying to think in my mind, okay, what, what's the ideal bonus card here? You know, how many of these bonus cards could I realistically score three, four, five points from? Um, and that's just going to come down to how many birds you've played, what kinds of birds. So I think there's there can be situations at, at the end of the game where, you know, maybe you've only got seven or eight birds down. Um, chances are you're not going to score a lot of points from an additional bonus card um, just because, you know, your options are really limited in terms of getting a lot of points from the few birds that you've got down. Uh, but equally, there'll be other situations where you might already have, say, 12 birds down. And so your options are going to be, you know, quite varied in terms of, OK, I could get a lot of different bonus cards that are all going to score me six or more points. Um, I think it is just useful to have that in mind and try and think about, OK, what bonus cards am I looking for? Um, and that is really going to help you decide whether it's worth playing that bird or maybe a different bird or laying eggs or doing something else um, at the end of the game. Yeah, that that's absolutely a very good point. Um, I I think it's it's always going to be a risk um, to to play a bonus card bird because you never know what bonus card you're gonna draw. But having that general awareness of you know how lightly you're gonna get a bonus card that can work well with what you already built um, can really kind of mitigate or manage that risk um, a little bit. Um, and I guess one more thing I want to share is that you know in terms of valuing, you know birds that give you bonus card um, based on some of the data that we have collected um, from you know over 300 games um, what we found that on average um, people score about 4.5 points um, for each bonus card um, so I guess that's generally the number that I take into consideration when I was deciding whether to play a bonus card or not um, what, what do you think about that Flan? Yeah, I think that's that's about the sort of number I have in mind. So um, obviously I'm going to look at my board and see what kind of bonus cards could meet, um, you know, the, the birds that I've already got down. Um, but yeah, I think just as a general rule of thumb, I think expecting about four points, um, I think that's a good number to have in mind. Obviously there's a lot of bonus cards where that lower threshold is four points, though in particular all of those nest bonus cards um, and there's a lot of those bonus cards where you get two points per bird. So, you know, probably on average you might have about two. So I think four points is a good number to have in mind. Um, but I think it's also useful to have that in mind if you're looking at your opponent's score and you're trying to think, okay, how many points are they on? You know, the one thing you don't know about your opponent's score is their bonus card. You could, in theory, go and add up everything else, you know, how many bird points have they got, how many eggs, how many, how many tuck cards, how many cash food, all of that. Um, but you just, you're not going to know their bonus cards, so it's useful to kind of have that in mind as a as a rough number in terms of okay, this is this is probably if my opponent has got say three bonus cards, I'm going to expect about twelve points. Yeah, um, and you know, often at the end of the game, that can really guide you in terms of okay, should I take the risk, play a bonus card bird myself, or should I you know take the safe option and maybe play something else or lay eggs? Um, it's definitely useful to have that in mind. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there you have it. Um, that's the tier list and strategy guide for bonus card. And before we wrap this up, I, I also want to give a shout out to Flan's latest Wingspan channel on YouTube called Winging It. Do you want to tell us more about your channel, Flan? Well, thank you for the shout out. That was very unexpected. Um, yeah. Yeah, as as, as Taya said, uh, I've got a few videos up there. So uh, it's a bit of a mixture at the moment. So we're trying to obviously get as many tournament games recorded or live streamed um, and then uploaded to YouTube. So there's a bit of a back catalogue there, um, which I definitely recommend checking out for any newer players. I think, you know, one of the most important um, ways of improving your game is watching other people play uh, and getting their perspectives. Uh, but not only that, we, we have a, you know, a, a large pool of uh, veteran wing, wingspan players who uh, commentate on these games as well, giving their thoughts and opinions. So definitely worth checking those out. Um, and yeah, I've got a few other things in mind for that channel, Wingspan related. So um, definitely head over there if it's your kind of thing. 
click the subscribe button um, and yeah hopefully some more interesting videos coming out uh, across the next few weeks yeah absolutely i'm gonna put the link in the description so please do check it out with that thanks for watching i'll catch you next time thanks everyone all right there you, you go <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll put it in <laughs> <laughs> along with along with this little bit that you always leave in at the end to really embarrass ourselves you know me so well <laughs> where we're like oh my god that took ages <laughs> oh look at this